everybody, Patina Pete. We're here with the other Metro. We're gonna bring this one down into the shop today. We're gonna get it all cleaned up, pressure washed, see what we're working with. This one's got the complete motor in it that turns, so hopefully we get this one running and driving. Joe's here today, so it seems like a good day to bring this one in so he can help check it out. So we're gonna get it hooked up, push it down into the shop. stuff in there. Look at that, huh? What am I How long use that box? Definitely could. Big ass spiders though. Keep them to yourself. I don't want that. Fun hammer. Dude, these things are from Texas and then Kansas. They got some funky spiders out there. Should we bomb it? They got ground tarantulas, they call them. There's called like a brown tarantula in East Texas. The car at that antique show we go to. They're as big as your hand. Oh. And if it rains, the water pushes them up out of the ground and they're everywhere. And if you're from up here, it scares the life out of you when you see one in person. I keep thinking that crack on the back yeah, window is a big ass tarantula. Yeah, let's follow it. <laughs> yeah, this one shuts all the way. Yeah. Yeah, this one. You threw that thing like a grenade.
is a triple diamond. I'm pretty sure it's like a 58. This is a silver diamond. It's one of the triple diamond family. It's a silver diamond. It's be like 57 and up. So I said this one's probably like a 58. Because from like 57 to 59, these trucks got these engines. So this truck's probably like a 58. It probably was converted to four shift. It probably just took off the three on the tree shift. That's what they did to mine too. You know, mine, my international had the same motor and the same train. And I had the same, you know, my truck had the same thing. Mine was a 56. The 56 to 58 S100 trucks got the silver diamond engine. Yeah, because that's what made my truck worth a lot of money was the motor that was in it, but it had a rod thrown through the block. It's like for cameras. Okay. Yeah, that's weird because that's plumbed like with a rubber line and then it's got like a little thermostat wire on it. I wonder if that's like an oil temp automatic well, shut off. Well, oil something. probably shuts it down. Okay. Yeah, because this hose here comes right out of the middle of the block like. That's a breather. It goes down into the ground. Yeah, this motor here is like a pretty big motor and it's got a this black tube comes over here. I wonder if it's like an oil pickup pump or something. They got they got this tank here too, running down into the intake manifold. It looks like they might have used vacuum as a way to push something. Oil. You guys just be careful before you play with this because they got all these open wires here. You don't know what you're going to end up energizing. Yeah, this side is probably going to have to come out. Yeah, I don't care if you take the wood out. That's fine. I figured I'd get it ready for when you got here. So. It is what it is, and probably just need it cleaned out, and I didn't do it. That's kind of a crappy spot for a flathead. You want me to pop up and check? I don't think it is. Look right here and see if that's trying to turn. Want to do this? Is it? No. Okay. I'm going to have to take the coil off. scope them real quick to see Seen some of the new one. Look alright. Nothing like out of the ordinary, so we'll just Well, I'm not ready to go in there for a sec. You going we going back under? 
Yeah, we're going to see you. Something feels like it's binding up. We need to pull it out and see what's going on. I don't want to make any damage if there is any. So you pulled the inspection cover and tried to turn it on a flywheel and you feel like it's tight? Yeah, okay. Yep. So you pulled the plugs. Did you oil up cylinders yet? No, yeah, I did. Okay. Put some blaster in there. Alright, so yeah, you're doing the right thing. Check the valve cover, see what you got happening. And, you know, it looks like we got mud daubers in the carb, so. They may have gotten down through the intake. Yeah. We're probably going to have to pull that off. Yeah. And check that too. I'd pull that off and then maybe try and, since you got the plugs out, depending on what valves are open, you might be able to suck some stuff out of the intake manifold too. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. man. Ooh. That's why. That's why. All right, people watching the video. So we got major rust in the cylinder head, and I don't think this one's gonna run. It's not impossible, but it's it will need all of this probably. Yeah, I mean the chances of that coming back to life are pretty low. Let me get over that lip. That is pretty pretty gnarly in there. I mean, I've had them like that and they come back to life, but that's that's pretty bad. That's looking like the Titanic to me. Just the top though. The bottom looks good. Do we have it? Was there an extra cylinder head laying over there? Yes, and there's all these parts. All those parts. Well, yeah, besides, you know. Yeah, get that cleaned out regardless. Because we can't even try and turn it with a battery with all of that stuff on no. there. No. I'd wire brush and shop back that and see what you're working with. And I don't know, unless you just want to pull the bolts and take the whole rocker assembly off and put the other one on. I mean, I have a whole other rocker assembly. Let's look at that real quick. There's another section, too. And this one's not that terrible. That one's not terrible, but well then, I say since you got to clean that anyways, we'll try and work with that first, and then we know we got extra parts. But so, but it turns, right? It feels like the bottom is definitely turning. Did you but, scope it yet? Yeah, and the uh, cylinders look good. It's just the well then, let's clean the top side, and we'll see what we can get out of it. Yeah, this is just hardcore shop vacuum, and then yeah, I'm just worried about. I'd probably pull the oil plug out of it and put a big pan under it so that as you're washing PB Blaster, hopefully a lot of it just washes it all out. Can yeah. we get this, is there anything stopping this oil pan from coming off if we have to pull it? No. All right, because that, I mean, with all this rust we're going to wash down, it's going to go right down them journals around the push rods and right to the pan. If this thing does get to whipping and you're going to want to turn it, I would get that perfectly clean and no rust. If we can get all them springs and rockers and everything to work without replacing anything and it seems like it's going to be okay, I mean, you're just, we're going to have to pull the pan because there's going to be so much metal on the bottom Probably of the Probably the side pan. cover too. Yeah, because it, I mean, it's going to be loaded with rust. So as long as we don't turn it right now, we should be okay to clean it. But yeah, if it's going to get to running, we're going to have to pull the pan in, pull the side cover. Before you even mess with that, maybe pull the side cover if you can get it off. Is there stuff in front of it or can you get it off? Uh, I mean, it's going to be tight, but I could definitely get it off. I just got to take this oil filter thing off. I'll just drain the oil out and take that oil filter out. There's a couple bolts. This is such a tough call for me on the labor because it's like yeah, it turns, it's... but I mean, ideally you'd want to like see what's behind that side cover too. As long as you keep everything dry right now, if you just go in there with some picks and screwdrivers in the shop back and get that cleaned up but i know i bet you that side cover i don't know i mean there's definitely going to be some rust in there but i wonder how this water got in here that's yeah, a lot I, of water to yeah, do that that was that was sitting for a long time yeah too. how do the cylinders look they're silvery inside yeah aren't they? i knew something felt like it was on the bind there's yeah. some sludge in there but man look at that rust inside of that valve cover just, you typically don't see this on these. Like on the Chevys, they have them stupid little flaps on the top of the valve cover. Well, and then that water jets right in there. I think one of these plugs might explain the rust. Let me find it. Dad, you know how antifreeze will crystallize over time? So right here, at the very tip of that. These are nice and wet and oil soaked. But yeah, I do see that little bit of green on that. That crystallized antifreeze. That could be what caused this. You see, a blown head gasket. I was gonna say, do you see a mark on a block anywhere, or blew a head gasket? 
No. I could be inside. I don't. But, yeah, it could have blown inside. inside. Yeah. It's still a turning motor. I would say I didn't want a huge project in a shop right now. Um, how much does it turn? Did you try full revolution on it? I wouldn't go that far with it. No. Because it feels like it's on a bind, but you could feel like it start. It moves like a good like couple inches before it starts, you know, hitting push rock and stuff. You know, you could tell the bottom would turn, you know, nice and freely. It's just, I felt like a binding, so I stopped and I was like, I gotta check some stuff. You can't even get on some of them nuts. I bet we're gonna have a hell of a time getting. If you go to adjust these valves, it looks like the nuts on the valves are gonna be a problem. Yeah, my other ones are in pretty decent shape. For the yeah. Most part. I wish we had both sides. I'd tell you. To I do just... have both sides. Oh, do you? Yes. Yeah, because I'm thinking about just pulling the main bolts. Yeah, I think that would be the best bet is to pull that off. Then clean it. Yes, because you got all that room then. Yeah. To get all that stuff out. Do an initial sweep and then I just pull the rocker assembly off because it, it's not worth working it on the motor. I think we'll just get it off. We'll try and put together what other parts we have. If not, we'll just dunk that stuff in a bucket of, of kerosene or diesel fuel and just let it eat because that, that is bad. Yeah. At least it turns. Some whatever went in there down. Yeah. What you need? You got a wrench? Yep. Okay. I mean, that bad to do because of how far it already is. Well, no, I mean, I guess it doesn't. I'm sorry. I'm I didn't have my second Red Bull yet today. I was going to say, because everywhere I spray this in, it's coming out between the head and the block, but that's because you pulled the head bolt. Did you get the PB Blaster yet? Not really. I'm still getting good. Well, that's how breaking it down because I'm like mixing it up. so. I wish you put some diesel in this one. I don't care. Huh? Yeah, I don't care. It's probably a good idea. I could put some of that in there and spin it around some. It might help a bit. If it needs bottom end bearings and the crank's all rusty and everything, then I'm not, I'm not messing with it. But if the lower end looks decent and it's just full of goop in the pan, then we'll clean the pan and slap it all back together. You get you were hey, and this is a 220. What, the motor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it says it on the bottom of the motor. They're pretty Brazilian. It was, uh, there was a hole through the block. 
I don't think yours is resilient then. No, it wasn't. You didn't do the Mason Town uh, JB Weld patch, or is it too big for that? It's too big. Some people hate to quack. You, you have to it? drop some more? Yeah. I can hold it. The bottom looks really nice. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Hold on, let me grab a highlight somewhere. So the camera can see. I mean, there's there's not really much rust build up there. A lot of it's going to clean up whenever it starts turning. Even the walls, Pete, the walls, you know, the sleeves. Yeah. Are really nice looking. Okay. So I think, um... We should get that big pan and put two of them side by side underneath of here. Okay. And wash it. Yeah, and wash it with some diesel and just, you know, if the couple spots that do have a little bit down here, we could just clean up with a wire brush and some diesel. Okay. I'm gonna clean this sucker. What he's done just walk all the way around. See how all that stuff's just coming right out? I just gotta get it going around. Ah, I knew it was happening, that's why I said, Watch yourself. So, where we're binding now is the lifters are hitting off the can. That's where we're bound up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get them to come up. Oh. That's not gonna be real easy. I mean, I felt the lifter holds up with PB Blaster. I'm gonna do it again. Everything's soaked up real good. Maybe I could uh, work those push rods. Use them old ones because there is another set. Yeah. Or if you want to get new ones, either way. I can use those old ones to work these with a okay. old hammer or something. Then you get a pick and just start. Some of them, they are starting to move some, so. Problems is rust ring is why they're not. So once they come up, they'll pretty much just stay up. You know? I figure if I just keep soaking them, we'll get them to that point where they're all up and I can get them out. Right. At least we're going to get new ones, you know. Now we need to spray them again because some of them are moving. I've reused them before from just shining them up like I did on that one Chevy, remember? Now they work. All of them work, so get that going for it. We will flush all this out of the pan, get the motor all flushed. And should be should come back to life. Well, we let it soak for a little while, you know. So we gotta get all these lifters out of the block. I got some of them moving already, but we're gonna be between the bottom and the top a good bit. So they're starting to move. They 
every time we start touching a lifter, it gets tight on us. Nice and smooth. Okay, so we gotta get this one here to drop back down a little more completely. That'll be all right there. I have an extension, so we'll tighten this up. We'll torque it actually. Then, you know, we'll be kind of on the home stretch. I already got a push rod I kind of cleaned up for that. So maybe we'll do that before we go back down. We'll tap all these downward. Ooh. Man, I hate smashing knuckles. Got a little tight at the last second. All it's doing is, you know, pushing them rush rings out. They're so soaked in oil, it's not going to hurt nothing mechanically. It pushed them all. Even the ones that were stuck are all up now. We got a couple down, which means we got to go some more. We want to get them all upward. We're going to spray from the top and bottom, let them soak, push them all back down. We're getting closer to a running engine. All up but one. But this one might be in there a little loose. Okay, I might see if I can just get in there with something and just give them a little like tap upward. It's the second one. How far up is it? Uh, more far up than the rest of them, maybe a couple centimeters. Okay. Yup. Move. Yup. I mean, it came up a lot. Now it's like about the size of a ratchet. A second one move again? Uh, not that I've noticed, no. It's still about the width of a ring. Oh. Yeah, first one's up a lot. Yeah, I, I felt it move a lot. Each cam load blocks where you can get up and tap on that so i have to move the engine for each one in order to do this it's going to be extremely time consuming so i want to spin it give me my little window then i could tap it upward we'll just have to keep going around until each one is pretty much out maybe we could grab on it with something you know not to score it too much or if it does score it we could buff it out of it but but we have to get all those out, clean them with emery cloth real good, clean inside all them holes with emery cloth, install them back in so whenever they're good, they should just pretty much fall real nice and ride on the cam real nicely. There shouldn't be anything uh, creating drag with those. So you have a lot of wiggle room with them. That one up just as high? About half, but it's like moving. That one moved? Yep, just moving. I think this will be on the fourth. Move? Higher than the third, yeah. Shane. She's moving back there. What's up, bud? All the way up front? Yeah, uh, it's the second to front one. Yeah, I know. But it's, uh, you're, it's moving pretty smoothly. It looks like it's stuck now. That might be the highest one. Yep. Seller full rust. Mm -hmm. Look at that. We gotta get those out there. All the lifters pulled. Means we broke it. Ice 
You see why I wanted to pull them out if you get a good look in there. That's full of rust. A little bit easier to pin them up with. But this one's pretty stuck. The second one, it's, about, it's pretty stuck right there. It's on a rust ridge. Four Those are like kind of like kind of still stuck, but kind of not stuck. Do you think you're gonna need just like a different tool to do it, or do you think just swing at it? It's gonna keep gonna get them eventually. I won't get them eventually, but it's gonna take forever. The thing is, once it gets hot from running, it'll all start freeing up. I know how to get them out of there. We get that tool. That might be a good thing. He said he wanted me to send him the link to it. See it. There's like a bunch of different styles of these. There's ones with like a screw that like. There's one with like a slide hammer on it.
So this goes down inside that. Okay, let's see how this is going to... be a ball down in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is going to have to go... Yeah, so this is going to have to... So that just needs tightened up. We'll have to put... You know, wrench on this, tighten that down. It's cool. It, it won't, I mean, like, it does grab, like, a little bit, but, like, as soon as you slide the thing, it pops it right out. Like, there's a ridge down in there, but, like, I think it's, like, too far gone for it to grab on these ones. I mean, like, I could try and just keep beating them from the bottom, but I don't know how much time you want to go. No, just pull the motor out of it. I gotta grab the other one from my buddy. Okay. We could do that. Yeah. Yeah, just yank that out. I changed the plan a little bit. A buddy of mine in Pittsburgh reached out to me when he saw us working on this motor and said, hey, did you forget that I have one of these motors sitting in my shop that runs and drives and it's ready to go? I'm like, yeah, I, I did forget about that motor. So since Clay's having issues with these lifters and this motor's not in the best shape, I'm just gonna run down the street and grab this other motor. So Clay's gonna work on getting this one out. I'm gonna run through what has to be done in here to pull this motor out. And then we're gonna have more of a time-lapse style quick you know breakdown of what's going on as far as the filming goes because a lot of you that are watching kind of understand like pulling motor mounts pulling a radiator we don't need to like go in depth and film that kind of thing so let's take a look in here on these vans there's three ways to get these motors out they either come out the bottom they come out the top or they come out the front not just metro it's just just cab over vans in general every one of them's different we decided we're going to try because we have this giant doorway we're going to try and take this cross member out versus mess with the front axle. Still have to pull the radiator because the motor's gonna have to have a little bit of room back and forth here. We have to have this tail shaft be able to come up and spin, but that's the plan. So he's got a lot to do. Exhaust, rad hoses, motor mounts, the clutch and Z-bar and stuff like that over there, drive shaft. Gotta get all that, cut this cross member out. It's welded in, I think just right here, maybe underneath. And then we might be ready to start yanking on it. And we're just gonna see if we can't lift it up, slide it back, spin it, and come out the side door. That's the plan. It sounds like it's gonna work. Kind of, work. It, it always sounds like it's gonna work. It should, hopefully it does. And we think that that's gonna be easier than messing with that front axle, so. it's better than what we got. S10 for Ford Ranger. There's no payload capacity, it's infinite. You know, it's all, everything's the same, but this yeah. is just a different. This is a straight international. Yeah. Well, let's get it off and I guess just hang it, leave it on the motor hoist and we can clean it.
supposedly this was uh, supposed to be a running engine at first. Well, as you see, they stripped everything out. This will hardly even turn because it, it just needed a little bit of lube or something. But they stripped that brass out. They took the main terminal. So like, even if I had the parts to do this, you sold, you're trying to sell this as a running motor. It would run. Now it's a whole drawn out process. And who knows where I'm gonna find those parts at or if you know, we're even gonna go that far now because this is just like a, you know, kick in the nuts pretty much. So if we can work at the outside of this body line, you know, we can get inside here and maybe hit it with a hammer and stuff to try to get it to, you know, go back to its normal shape. That sucks, man. They're just all flatheads. I, I, I hate flatheads. Oh, uh, that's why my track ain't working. I got mud daubers in it. Got all kind of stuff in there. Comment. I see your line moving now. Yes, so that's crinkled upward, so it's going to have to come out then in. Now I have a good ratchet strap. find that kit that I keep seeing online. It's like a panel welder, like a spot welder. Like you load this copper time into your gun or whatever and it tacks it at the end. And then there's all these fingers or this bar. I think it's a straight bar that goes yeah. through and then you pull on it. Yeah, them are nice. If you find a kit that's like legit, I'll buy it. I just, okay. you know how when you Google that stuff, you get like all the Chinese stuff and the yeah, American then. vendors. We're gonna find like, just somebody that sells it, and if we hate it, we can return it. You just gotta find a decent vendor for it. I'm just trying to get it to come forward a little more. If you wanna tack something on here, you can. You know, you're smart, you can make some. I think I'm gonna get a couple things tacked on inside there. Mm -hmm. That'll probably be the best bet. Yeah, we might have just found something kinda neat there with a piece of chain. Yeah, so if I take it kinda like so, put it in here and then it'll pull yeah. You can pull from the center part and it'll pull more at once. So I'm just going to pretty much line the links for the most part, the length of that. Then we're going to move slowly down the whole thing and just pull it.
the idea of having this for us. So if I get this running, it's going to be nice. A little bit low oil, but... This is a cooler. This is a pump. There's a filter there. They had it cycling through because they were running it for long extended periods. They weren't using it as a welder. They were using it as a uh, generator for power inside this. That's why these walls are like this with insulation. It does run so we're gonna see if we can get it the gravity feed with that tank and I'll just like hold it and we'll actually leave it run for a minute. That big four time he did for me. Still got some gummy stuff in it. Yeah, you can see it. It started shooting it out of the carb. Was it? Yeah, see all this black? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, that's what that was. That's what shot out. <laughs> spark plug arrestor so we could pretty much eliminate that if we get the right spark plug and we'll eliminate that arrestor that they have in both sides get a little bit more power out of it too from that because if you look on this side it doesn't have a spark plug arrestor it has a straight plug so we need to find a number off of this plug and get two of those brand new all right so we got an update and this has never happened in one of our videos before I'm quitting on this one. Told Clay, leave it alone, pulled the motor out of it. So the whole thing with pulling the motor was to try and get these other stuck lifters out and thought I was going to get a uh, running 220 Blue Diamond from a buddy of mine who said he had one out of a Metro. We had a miscommunication, all good. It was local, it was cheap, but I bought that other motor. We'll just show you that. It's not a Blue Diamond engine. 
So as far as parts for this one, it's not going to help us at all. So that's kind of like a boat anchor I got sitting in my driveway. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know. We'll show you that one. So I've decided to just sell the Blue Diamond engine out of that one separately. And then we have this. I'm not an international guru. The oil pan on this one says 220. This came out of like a 54 International Metro. This motor does turn. Unfortunately, somebody robbed the distributor for all of those parts, so we can't make it run. I have no interest in chasing down the parts to make this thing run. I'm probably just gonna list it online as is, get my money back out of this thing. Somebody's gonna put an LS motor into that Metro anyways, or a 350 or a little 4BT Cummins or something. So I'm not gonna sweat it. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up. I got the welder out of it too. So we took the big extendo bumper off. Clay got that sorted. We're gonna get this all back together. But I have officially given up on that motor. I have a fortune into Clay's time on that blue diamond motor. That's the name of this game, right? It's not all, they're not always winners. So if you're interested in this truck, it'll be in the 10 grand area on this one. It will not run and drive, will not have a motor. done 56 metro we ended up pulling the motor so i had an instagram follower reach out tell me that some of these blue diamond engines were made out of nickel, nickel. so i got all excited took it to a scrapyard in pittsburgh that had a rf scanner or something they ground off a little part of the block put it on there it's like 99 percent cast iron so i have the motor you can have it with the truck if you want it if not it's out it's ready for your ls swap or whatever this is an sm 120 or 122 three quarter ton like the medium wheelbase single rear wheel still pretty short was uh underwater salvage truck this guy did like a lot of marine like uh torching fabrication stuff like that on boats and that kind of thing probably some gas and oil stuff too being that it was in houston texas got a good title on it it's ready to turn into whatever you want i mean i see these things turned into food trucks i see them turned into merchandise trucks i see them parked outside of businesses i see people using them for their businesses whatever Lots of them have been put on custom frames. There's a guy out in Texas that does them all the time. Got a YouTube channel, restored. He's done quite a few of them, turning rust. So 9,500 bucks on this one, good title. We can ship it, we can export it, we can deliver it. If you're interested in it, hit me up, 412-335-6100. And that's it on this one. If you haven't seen our new line of merchandise out yet, we got these hoodies, we got t-shirts. This is the gas station hoodie here. A cool little retro design. Merch sales help us out, help us produce these videos. So we greatly appreciate that. That stuff's available at ironcitygarage.com. And if you got cars for sale at home, check out the next part of this video. I'll give you a little insight on what we're looking to buy. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. We got some awesome content coming out in the next couple months. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on the YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So 
if you have an original paint or an original old fastback Mustang that needs work like these ones I have on my trailer, or if you have an old pickup or again, a convertible Impala cab over truck, whether it doesn't matter where you are, we buy nationwide here in the United States, all the way as far as California. I've had stuff, New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, high desert stuff we love. So, or if you're on the East Coast and it's a rusty Mustang or a rusty convertible Impala, that is fine. We typically don't buy many trucks on the East Coast, but I buy a lot of cars on the East Coast. If you have cab over parts also, especially for these early Fords, I'd be interested in that. It never hurts to send me an email or a text, ironcitygarage at gmail.com. You're welcome to send me an email or a text message, probably the best. You kind of get an instant answer that way, 412-335-6100. I'd love to talk to you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages. 